name is Louis from LDB Woodworking and this is part 2 of the curved plywood table. If you haven't seen part 1, I strongly recommend that you watch this first. I will leave a link in the description below. So following part 1, we have cut all the pieces to size and then we've done all the cutouts as a part 1 and then off camera I've gone ahead and I've filled up all the gaps, all the holes that you typically get on plywood. So now the next step would be to sand all these edges and then I will take up the sand and I'll show you how. given everything a light sanding. So now I'm going to start putting them together according to the list and I'm going to start here at, um, at uh, part number 10. Okay so now we are looking at this column on the list so I'm going to uh, start from part 10 which is this one on my right here and then I will alternate between a number and a letter. So I'm going to start with 10 then I'm going to go to part I, which is this one, then to 9, then to H, and so forth, and so forth, until I end with number 1, which is this one, and you'll see me start building it this way, so it will be smaller pieces, and they will get progressively bigger, until I have gone through the first half. So what we're going to do, basically, in essence now, is to, is to build half of the table, and then the other two... Uh, cut panels will give us the, the opposite of. So I'm going to start now uh, by putting them together with glue and I'm going to use my brad nailer. If you do not have a brad nailer you can still put this together in one of two ways. So you can either use normal panel pins and a hammer or you can simply uh, pre-drill and uh, put small uh, thin gauge screws in as well. So I'm going to start and uh, glue and pin these uh, one by one.
half assembled and now I'm going to do exactly the same with the other two panels to create the top half. Now at this stage you will see that if you put some weight on this it tends to want to open up but don't worry about that because at a later stage we're going to fit a bottom and a top to this and that's going to give it a lot more stability. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, put the other one together and then I'll see you a little bit later when we do this uh, center section and uh, I will take you through that. Okay. Okay, so I've gone ahead and I've finished the other half. So now I've got the two halves and all we have to do now is to complete the center section that's going in between. So I've got them all standing here and then looking back at the plan at the, at the cut list uh, in part one we said that um, some of these parts we did not cut from here so these ones I've gone ahead and cut from the off cuts from, uh, from the first board so these are uh, from the cut list uh, components J and K as well as 11 and 12 so I've got two J's I've got two 11's two K's and one 12 so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put these ones together and uh, then the last step would be to assemble the whole lot. Okay. pieces out why did I cut these from the from the uh, from the off cut and the reason being is as you see that these ones are so close to one another we would have ended up with these little small slivers uh, not giving enough enough material to to fix together and um, so these ones you cut from uh, from full board so it's basically the one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven middle pieces that will be full board and this will give you enough material to glue and pin these together and one more thing to note is that on uh, on all these panels I have broken the edge with uh, with a quarter inch round over a bit and these ones I've left I've left square I will I will just break the corner with a little bit of hand sanding but because like I said the differences in the sizes are so small that if I if I had to put a, a quarter inch round over here it would have been uh, it would have been too big and then the round over would go in underneath the next panel okay the moment of truth so we've got the three halves or the two halves and the center section and they all been glued up so the next step is to assemble these uh, uh, three pieces together so I'm going to put glue in between and I'm going to put my clamps uh, on all on all four of the corners of the table and tighten them up a little bit by little bit and continuously taking measurements to make sure that the distance from panel to panel on all four of the corners stay the same after I've clamped it up otherwise the table will be, uh, will be standing um, skew and it will not look nice I would suggest if you do not have a big workbench uh, that's flat that you, can, uh, that you can clamp this together try to find a spot on the floor that's reasonably flat and uh, clamp the table together there otherwise you might end up with a table that's not flat at the back so I'm going to start putting them together and uh, tightening them up little by little so that I can uh, and keep on taking the measurements so that I can have a, uh, a table with the, the uh, top and bottom parallel and also the top and the bottom parallel this way okay
this video off uh, here and make this the end of part two. And then part three will basically then be the, the finishing off the sanding, uh, putting on the tops, the adjustable feet, and uh, spraying the, uh, the table and have it ready for uh, for use. So um, if you uh, if you are still with me at this point, um, uh, thank you for watching. Thank you for taking the time to uh, to see what I do. And uh, if you haven't done so already. Uh, I would really appreciate it if you could subscribe and uh, this will um, uh, basically help to, uh, to notify you of uh, part 3 which will be available within uh, the next few days or maybe uh, a week or so. Okay, thank you again and uh, see you next time. Bye-bye.